was good timing. That was really good timing. Good morning, and thanks for coming. Thanks for listening. Um, huge thanks to Southeast Linux Fest and the team that puts this together. I'm happy to be back here in person. Um, it's been a really lonely past few years, and we were able to meet remotely, and that was fun, and it did definitely fill in an itch, but it wasn't quite the same. So if you intended to be in a talk about Matrix, then you're in the right place. Matrix, the communication platform, not the movie. Show of hands. Who here has has some experience with Matrix? Okay. So, what is Matrix? Matrix is an open source communication protocol, real-time communication. So, essentially, it's a messaging system. It uses the store and forward to facilitate one user on their provider to communicate with another user. So, you're familiar with this model if you've ever used email. Your email client connects to a mail server or a mail service. And when you send an email, you send it to your mail server, your mail server then sends it to another mail server. It can be, get this, any mail server. And then that mail server delivers it to the person's account. Now, when I say it with email, you're all looking at me like, well, duh. But think about how that model plays out today. How many interoperable services are there? Doesn't work like that, right? If I told you, yeah, I signed up for Discord and you signed up for Facebook Messenger, we should be able to send each other messages, right? No. Was well, it complicated? It's a text message. I mean, it's just text characters. Why can't we move it from point A to point B? It's because Facebook has absolutely no interest in working with Discord. Discord couldn't care less about working with Slack. Slack doesn't really care about working with Microsoft Teams. They all want to live in their own camp and they want you to come into their camp. So Matrix is an application layer communications protocol for federated real-time communication. Federated meaning that it is able to go from one server to another, just like we do with email. Matrix provides an HTTP API uh, and an open source reference for the implementation. So we are not using anything terribly complex underneath. It's, this is a very well understood technology. It's been around for a long time. If you have, if you visit website web pages, then you understand how this works. And it can integrate with standard web services, things like WebRTC. So when you want to do voice calls or you want to do video calls, that functionality is there, but it's all based on open source principles. Matrix was originally created inside of Amdocs by Matthew and Amanda Lin. In 2014, Amdocs funded most of the development, and they continued to do that until about 2017. Now, in 2015, they created a subsidy uh, specifically to deal with uh, working on the development of the Matrix protocol. And in July 20, uh, 2017, they cut funding, and so they, f the Matrix team founded their own organization for the continued development of the Matrix protocol, and they call that New Vector Limited. So fast forward to January 2018, they received $5 million from Status, which is an Ethereum-based startup. Later that year in 2018, the French government announced that they were going to launch their own chat app called T-Chat based on Matrix. And essentially what they did was took the reference uh, chat client that, that Matrix had produced and forked it, gave it a different logo, gave it a different name, hard-coded it to a different server, and gave it out to everybody in the French government. October 2018, Matrix.org is founded, and the idea is to have an organization that works on the development and uh, continued movement of the Matrix protocol apart from any corporate interests. Okay, That's going to come up again later, and it's important. June 2019, the Matrix protocol finally exits beta with version 1.0 across all the APIs. Okay, Now, the timing of this couldn't have been better for us at Southeast Linux Fest. I'm going to get to that in a second. 
October 2019, New Vector raised an additional $8.5 million to continue the development of Matrix. So now we have some real money in this idea of a decentralized communication system. Is that not the... So we talked a little bit about T-Chat with the French government. In February 2019, KDE looks over at what Matrix is doing and they said, yeah, that's totally what we want to move towards. And so they adopt Matrix as their standard. December 2019, the German Ministry of Defense does the exact same thing that the French government did. And again, forked the open source client, changed the logo, hard coded it to a different home server. And the German had what they called BW Messenger. Again, BW Messenger, T-Chat, they're all the same Matrix client uh, that was originally developed. December 2019, Mozilla announces that they're going to switch to Matrix as their default communication system. Now, around this time, a little thing was happening out in Wuhan that eventually sort of made its way here to the U.S. That ended up shutting self down, and that's why we haven't seen each other in person for the past few years. June 2020, we are ramping up to try to do self virtually. We've never done self entirely virtually, so that was something new and that was something different. So I had heard of Matrix. I'd played with it a little bit, but I wasn't terribly well versed in it. So I set up a server and played with it a little bit, and it worked most of the time, not all of the time. So I thought, well, the only thing we can do is bail from this and go to a different solution. So we did that. And I started feeling guilty about it. Um, and so we get to self 2020 and we get through the first day and the, the other solution that we went to had its own problems. And I started thinking to myself, if I'm going to solve problems, why wouldn't I want to do it on an open source platform and one that potentially has uses outside of just doing self? And so I made somewhat of a... a, a some sort of a post in the chat room that said something like this. I'm setting up a matrix server. It's probably going to be a catastrophic fire. I'm going to play with it myself because I'm interested in it, which will further the catastrophic fire. And if it happens to work, great. And if it doesn't work, oh well, you were warned. We set a matrix server up. We ran the rest of self that year on a matrix server. Had no problems. It was fantastic. It was great. And then matrix took over my life. So, October 2020, Element uh, acquired Gitter from GitLab. And this is the first time I actually started to see this play out. So, Matrix develops this protocol. It works very well inside of the Matrix ecosystem, but the same could be said about Discord or Mattermost or Rocket Chat or Slack or Teams. All of them work in their own environment. But now, GitLab wants to get rid of Gitter, and so it gets sold to Element. Uh, and so Element it says, we are going to recode Gitter to speak Matrix underneath. Because Gitter was an open source communications platform to begin with, it turned out it was actually fairly trivial to go about converting it to speak Matrix underneath. Additionally, Gitter actually had some features that Matrix didn't, knocking. And they looked at that and said, that, we should be doing it that way. So again, what we saw was competing standards in the open source world, competing models, ended up delivering a better product for everyone because now they're taking all the work that the folks at Gitter did and they're implementing that into Matrix. So both get better. June 2021, the fourth estate announces the development of uh, Serif, which I'll get to uh, in a second. Uh, essentially what it is, is a communication platform for reporters and journalists. About this time, there's a ton of protesting going on, and there are a ton of different views being expressed, and a lot of people aren't happy with uh, law enforcement agencies sending up drones to collect the IMEI of the cell phones of the people that are participating in these protests. And so people are looking for, again, communication platforms and Journalists are trying to find secure and anonymous ways that they can uh, communicate with each other and with other people. Germany's nationalized healthcare system that year announces that they are going to roll out a matrix client for their entire healthcare system because they want to protect their 
patient's privacy rights. Well, guess what you don't get with Microsoft Teams? Every message you send, Microsoft potentially has access to. Every Slack message you send, Slack potentially has access to. And so that doesn't work for the German government. That doesn't work for the German healthcare system. So they want something that's truly private, where they control the encryption and the keys are only on the device. So they go to Matrix. We talked a little bit about Gitter and how they sp spoke Matrix just a few, like a month ago. Rocket Chat, another competing open source platform, said, we also want to speak Matrix underneath the hood. Now, the truth is, Rocket Chat has their own concept and their own ideas of how they want to design a chat client. But the problem that Rocket Chat was missing was if you had two people on Rocket Chat and they were on different instances, those people couldn't communicate with each other. That's not a great communications experience. So if they just take the federation portion, they borrow what they like from Matrix, then they get to take advantage of the concept of federation. So Rocket Chat starts to speak Matrix underneath. They reach out and said, hey, is this possible? And would you help us with this? And Matrix says, yeah, we just did this for Gitter. So yes, it's possible. And we actually have a very outlined path on how you can do this. And we would be happy to help you. So again, competing open source products working together and because they're all open standards, the, all the ships rise. So how does Matrix work? The Matrix standard uh, is a RESTful HTTP API for securely transmitting and replicating JSON data between Matrix-capable clients. In other words, this is not, not super exciting technology. This is very basic things that we've been using for many years. We're just using it in a different way. It's not terribly complicated to move text or images or, or data from one place to another. And if we wrap that in a bit of encryption, we get all of the things that we'd be looking for in a secure, reliable communications platform. Now, where Matrix starts to set itself apart is its ability to communicate with communication services that can integrate with it. Matrix is designed from the ground up to be interoperable, which means if you have half an inkling to want to uh, tie your service to Matrix, it can be done. And so there are a number of very proprietary platforms like Discord, like Slack, like Teams, because they have an API, you, we can tie those communication platforms into Matrix. Now, this is really important. If you go back uh, into the early 90s, there was a time when people that were processing data were using Lotus 123. Do you know what the key thing that allowed Microsoft to steal that market share and to why if you walk into a, a, a business environment today and say Lotus 123, they go, huh? But if you say Microsoft Excel, they go, oh. Backwards compatibility, that's exactly right. Because Microsoft allowed people to open their existing Lotus 123 spreadsheets, People did that and they said, yeah, sure, I'll use this program. I don't really care what I'm doing as long as, it, as long as my data opens up and I can do all of the things. Well, what happens? After you open it a few times and you get comfortable with that, eventually you just start saving it in whatever the default format in Excel is. Now we're all on Excel. So if you want new technology to be adopted, it has to, has to, has to be backwards compatible with where people are today. You have to meet them in the road. And this is something that a lot of technologies fundamentally get wrong. Matrix gets it right. So the concept is pretty simple. We send an HTTP put request and just place data on a server. Much like email, that server can then replicate or, or uh, federate that data around to other servers, those servers then deliver those messages to their respective users. The data is signed using a Git style signature uh, to mitigate tampering. So every message is cryptographically signed so we can verify the authenticity. That's really important because if you remember, it's about a year ago, I think, uh, it was, I believe it was EA had a hack in where somebody got a hold of somebody's Slack credentials. And you would think to yourself, how big of a deal can getting access to the Slack be, right? They sent a message to the IT department requesting them to reset an SSH credential into the server. And a few moments later, a few terabytes of data walked right out of EA with containing all of the source code for the games. Why did that happen? Did it happen because Slack is a poor communications uh, platform that's easily hacked? No. 
but it doesn't verify authenticity. The person working in the IT department had no way of knowing that the person sitting on the other end of that computer wasn't the screen name that they thought it was. Because this is not something that Slack does. It is something that Matrix does. So federated traffic is encrypted with HTTPS and then signed with the server's private key, and that avoids spoofing. So if you, when you go to send a message, your server is going to stamp its approval with its server signing key. Uh, as the, the one thing, if you set up a matrix server, you absolutely have to make sure you back up. And this is what verifies that authenticity. So the actual encryption under the hood. One of my complaints about Telegram is that they roll their own encryption. So I think it was Mo uh, Moxie Marlinspike said, there's essentially a plain text message of every Telegram chat sitting on some server. Uh, and that's mostly accurate. Telegram will do encrypted chats, but they roll their own crypto. Um, so do we trust it? And if you don't go into a secret chat, then you're not using encryption and it's just in plain text message. Oh, by the way, if you start a secret chat on your phone and later go to your desktop, well, guess what isn't there? The chat, because there's no functionality in Telegram to suck up those keys securely and transfer them over to another device. So in some ways that's good because it means that our keys really do only reside on the device that we're using. It truly is end to end encryption. The downside is it's hugely inconvenient that you can't pick up that conversation. And there are secure ways to do that. And we're gonna see how that happens in a little bit. So the way that Matrix does this is they use something called uh, a ratchet based on the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. And so essentially it generates a temporary key that's used for short-lived conversations. And so every new session, keys are exchanged with after every few rounds of a communication, which means if you're an attacker and you're trying to compromise the key, it's not good enough to capture the key once because the next time, that, that, the next time there's a conversation, it's going to have new keys and again that attacker is locked out. So this forces the attacker to, it necessitates having to capture all of the communication between the honest parties that are trying to communicate. And that's a very difficult thing to do. And as soon as that key cycles, they lose access. Okay, so this is called future secrecy. The data is transmitted over matrix is we don't have to trust the server. So the keys for the encrypted data reside on the client. If that's your phone, it's your phone. If it's your laptop, it's your laptop. The important part is it's not the server, which means we don't have to trust that the server operator isn't doing anything malicious because even if they're trying to, they actually don't have access to the private keys. They can't get to those messages. So they can only be decrypted by authorized participants of the room. Those are the only people that those keys, those just you and the person you're talking to are the only people that will have access to those private keys. Now they had to do some, uh, some modifications to the OLM algorithm and they went to uh, MEGOLM, which is better suited for some of the bigger rooms. So this is a diagram of kind of how a matrix server works. So we have clients that are out here and they all talk to their respective home servers. And if all they want to do is talk to each other on their home servers, then that traffic never leaves the home server. But if this user over here wants to talk to this over user over here, these two servers have the option, not requirement, option of federating with each other, which means the traffic will flow from uh, one server to the other. Now, you can choose if you want wide open federation. In other words, every server that's picking to federate, I want all traffic. You can choose to only keep traffic on your server, or you can choose to federate with selected servers. Now, coming up down the road is going to be something called reputation. And reputation is a feature that allows you to share information about problematic servers. So, Chris DeLuca is a troublemaker. Anybody that knows him knows that he's a troublemaker. And so when he sets up DeLuca's home server, he's on there making trouble, and he bounces around to Peter's server. And Peter says, tired of this. Every user on DeLuca's server, it's a pain. I'm sick of it. So I'm not federating with him anymore. I'm done. Instead of me having to wait for DeLuca to come into my server and then me to have a negative interaction and then I'll blacklist his server, I can just say to Peter, you and I are good friends. We know each other. If you don't like somebody, I don't like somebody. I'm going to ban everybody that you ban and we can share the opportunity to blacklist who we federate with. Now, this is a double-edged sword. It is, in my opinion, 
a necessary component for moderation. It does, however, carry the potential for people to selectively choose who they want to listen to, creating echo chambers and limiting speech. So there is a hot debate right now of if, if, if reputation goes forward and if we don't have a meaningful way to address this, does it just turn into anybody with unpopular opinions? winds up on the share on the really big good blacklists and then yeah sure you can have matrix if you if you and the other person want to share a home server but nobody else will federate to you so all of the public instances you can't talk to any of those people and those people can't talk to you that's the concern i respectfully submit to you that the answer to too much free speech is more free speech so if you don't like deluca's home server don't federate with him he'll find a group of people that will federate with him and it'll all work out just fine. Bridges. The interoperability of Matrix is what sets it apart from almost every other communication platform out there. Bridges uh, bridge messages from different chat applications in and out of Matrix rooms. So bridges are programs that run on the server and communicate with non-Matrix server. We have a couple of different types of bridges that we can use in Matrix. The first is the portal bridge. And this is essentially when you want to take two very interoperable networks and just connect them. So the best example I have of this is uh, Libera chat. So the entire Libera network is bridged to Matrix and federated over Matrix. So if you want to just join an existing IRC uh, chat room, even though Matrix isn't technically an IRC client, you can join, you know, pound whatever the channel name is, colon Libera.chat, and it will drop you into that IRC chat, and you'll be able to see all of the traffic from the people on the IRC side, and they will see all the traffic from your side. And because both are interoperable standards, and because both places value the concept of interoperability, the visual difference is non-existent. You, have, you, you cannot tell that that person is on an IRC. It lo they look to you like a matrix user and you look like an IRC user to them. The second way we can do it is plumbed rooms. And this is where we make a very intentional decision to connect one room to another room. Yes? So, the, the real, really the answer is, are you encrypting the chat or are you not encrypting the chat? And so if you create a encrypted chat, you're just simply not going to be able to bridge to other platforms. Uh, you, you create encrypted chat, you can't bridge to Telegram for, uh, on, with, with, the, uh, with the Telegram. Yeah. I just was curious how you connect Yeah, Yeah, and, and to be clear, there are some things you're going to lose, right? You'd want to be aware that LiberaChat is an IRC network because it also isn't doing any sort of cryptographical verification of the identity. It's just, it's a registered user on IRC. It has a unique namespace, so we will federate with it. I didn't want to interrupt you, but since somebody else already did. Two slides prior, you were talking about the, the key exchange and how it, it keeps changing. Mm-hmm. That's my understanding. Yeah, I don't think it'll roll the keys just because it's sitting there. I think new communication would have to occur. My, my question is, is that room doesn't matter when we created it. We created it six years ago. That's right. There are keys that are exchanging. The next time we start chatting. That's exactly right. Okay. That's exactly right. So the second kind of room is a plumbed room, and this is where we make a very intentional decision to connect one room to another room. So perhaps there's an IRC, maybe you have your own IRC daemon that's running, and you just want one IRC room to be bridged to Matrix. We can use a plumbed room to do that. The third style is what is known as a bridge bot style, and most of you have probably seen this, but there's a bot that exists on one or both sides, and the bot simply relays the message. Now, this is the least appealing way of doing bridging because it's very obvious to everybody that is using the platform that it's a bridged room. It's going to show up as, you know, in this case, I'm bridging Telegram 
to Matrix, and it shows up as the Matrix Telegram Bridge. Then it gives me the username, then a colon, and then the message. But the 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 user's avatar is always going to be that of the bridge. Um, so it, it it's the least desirable way, in my opinion, to bridge two rooms together. Then we get into puppeting. Now, puppeting is really cool because puppeting essentially allows Matrix to control a user on one or both ends. One end is a single puppet. If it's both ends, it's a double puppet. So how that works is in the bottom window here, you can see this. This is a screen cap from, uh, from Telegram. And when I ask Kenny, what account does this look like it's coming from? He replies, and again, on my element side, on my matrix side, he, again, looks just like a matrix user to me. The only reason I know it's Telegram is because it puts Telegram in brackets so I know which platform I'm communicating with, to, I think, to circle back to, to, to one of your questions. But it looks like I am signed into my Telegram client. As far as he's concerned, my Telegram client is my matrix client, and it's just controlling my Telegram username. So I appear as a native Telegram user to everybody on Telegram. Somebody sends me a DM, I show it. They invite me to a group, I show up. But everything is a matrix message to me. So here is a, uh, a brief diagram that kind of shows you all of the platforms that are supported today for doing bridging to matrix. You'll notice that's pretty much all the big ones. Um, iMessage, Facebook Messenger, SMS, LinkedIn, uh, Mumble, IRC, Skype, Telegram, uh, plain old email. Uh, if you have a messaging platform, there's a good chance that you can bridge it to Matrix, meaning that all of those people uh, just become a Matrix chat to you. So if you participated in the Southeast Linux Fest Telegram group, the IRC channel, or the Matrix group, you have been using bridging all weekend, even if you didn't know it. In the center, we have our matrix server, and our matrix server is linuxdelta.com, and so the room is self-lobby colon linuxdelta.com. On Telegram, we have t.me slash Southeast Linux Fest. This is bridge to matrix, and from Liberia chat, we have uh, pound Southeast Linux Fest. Now, Matrix does something for us here because every time the Libera chat IRC people, the, old, the, the, the guys, you know, the curmudgeons that are sitting in the corner, IRC is good enough, plain text works just fine. Those people can all talk to that new confangled Telegram thing that all the kids have on their phone. And the Telegram kids can all talk to all of the old fuddy-duddies on IRC because, because Matrix is sitting in the middle and handing that traffic to and from Everybody gets to be in the same room. Everybody gets to participate. Then we get into services that are springing up around Matrix. So jmp.chat, if you haven't heard of it, it frustrates me to no end that I live in 2022 and have a persistent internet connection almost everywhere I go. And if I don't have a persistent internet connection, it's oftentimes because I'm the guy getting paid to put the internet in, and I will have a persistent internet connection. And yet, and yet, I am tied to one stupid physical device for a handful of people that absolutely insist on using SMS to message uh, back and forth. JMP solves this problem because JMP allows you to, for $2.99 a month, sign up for a DID that they give you, that, that you purchase from them. And when you go through the checkout, it says, how would you like your SMS messages delivered? Now, if you weren't, if you weren't interested in Matrix, they have their own little web client and they expose that over XMPP. But again, XMPP is a very, very extensible, very, very flexible, very, very interoperable communication standard. So it dovetails nicely with Matrix and has a perfect integration. You can just click on I'm a Matrix user. Here's my Matrix username. And all those text messages now come straight to your Matrix account. You can port your existing phone number. What was your first question? 
The phone number is assigned to you from JMP. Once you purchase a phone number, you can issue a port request to them to transfer your number from wherever it is to JMP. They have to control it in order to be able to get the text messages and send them out to you. But yeah, you can totally bring a number. Will your cell phone still work as a, as a cell phone? So when you purchase the JMP chat or port your number, obviously only one provider can have your phone number at a time. So once you port your phone number, your phone stops working. So you go back to your cell phone provider and say, I want a new phone number, and they give you a new phone number. Think of that as an endpoint delivery number, okay? You message their bot and tell it, here's where I want you to send my phone calls. When somebody calls my phone number, I want you to deliver those phone calls to, and I'm my 3CX number, my 3CX server. So my 3CX server now delivers those calls, or my asterisk server, delivers those calls now over a SIP endpoint. They host their own SIP server. So if you didn't have one and said, I want to, I want my calls delivered over SIP, I want it to come just over the internet, I don't want to have to have a cell phone, uh, you know, uh, subscription, you can do that, or you can have them deliver it to an existing uh, uh, SIP server. The SMS messages then can be delivered to Matrix. Now, they are already working on and will someday have the ability to sign in to a SIP server from Matrix, and it will be a SIP client. In fact, the dial pad is already done. The UI stuff is there. They're just waiting for some of the backend stuff to, to because they're just really busy. If you purchase a SIM card from a provider, they have access to your location constantly. If you purchase a SIM, card or, a SIM card from a provider, every phone call and every text message goes through them, which means they have a copy of all of those text messages. So every text message you ever sent uh, that, that is in any way private, you're giving a copy to your provider and whoever's provider is receiving that text message. Communication in general is an exceptionally important human aspect. In fact, it's one of the most important human aspects. And my day job largely resolve, uh, revolves around serving other people. To do that effectively, I have to be able to communicate with them. The problem is, oftentimes, everybody has a different way of how they want to communicate. Some people want to use SMS. Some people want to use IRC. Some people want to use Slack. Some people want to use Discord. Some people want to use Facebook. So how do we get all of that communication into one central place so that you are nothing but a matrix message to me. I have two friends. My friend came up to me and said, my boyfriend just moved here from uh, Russia and he wants to get interested in, he's interested in technology and would like to get into tech. Can you help him? And I said, sure. So I called him up on the phone and tried to have a conversation with him but he's just beginning to speak English. And so there was this language barrier. And after an hour on the phone with him, we had exchanged like three or four ideas. And so I, I, I left it at, you know, I don't know how to help you. I want to help you, but I don't know how to help you. If you will install this app, sign up for this account, give me your name, let's establish communication. And someday, if I come across a way that I can help you, I'll circle back to you. That was six, seven months ago. Fast forward to last night, I run into my friend Vlad. He says, yeah, I would be willing to help that guy. I speak a little bit of Russian or could brush up on my Russian. I said, that would be fantastic. So I go find Sergey's contact information on Matrix. I invite him to a room, I invite Vlad to a room, and now they're connected. And we've facilitated that connection. Doesn't matter that Vlad is on one server and Sergey's on another server. Doesn't matter, I don't have to have Sergey's phone number. It doesn't matter that he just moved to the United States and didn't have a cell phone. None of that matters. What matters is there was one central way that you could establish a communication and everybody could participate in it. Everything in Matrix is a room, and this is an important concept to understand. When you create a room in Matrix, you can invite one person to the room. So if you have a room with just two people in it, most other chat platforms would refer to that as a direct message. In Matrix, it's just a room with two people. So you can tap on the direct message and say, I want to send a direct message, but understand that under the hood, what you're doing is creating a room, inviting yourself to it, and inviting the other person to it. If you wanted to create a chat group, much like you would in like a Telegram group or a Signal group, you can do that. Again, 
To Matrix, it's just a room, but now instead of having two participants, it has more than two participants. I put multiple accounts, not multiple people, because you as an individual might have multiple accounts. How many of you have more than one job? There are times when you want to keep an eye on your other job or what's happening. If, if your boss reaches out or somebody needs something, it'd be nice to kind of keep an eye on it. But then there are times when, hey, I'm at day job right now. I'm sorry, I can't help with that. And so we need to be able to shut parts of that out. Matrix supports having multiple accounts. So I can have a work account when I am Noah at work. I can have a personal account when I'm Noah at home. If I have a second job, I can have a Noah account at that job. And the rooms that I want to keep an eye on at all times, I simply invite all of my accounts to those rooms. And now I can keep track of it no matter what hat I'm wearing that day. If there is something where I say that is only relevant to me when I'm at X, when I'm there, that's when I care about it. Outside of that, I, it, there's nothing I can do about it anyway, so I don't want the noise arriving at my phone. I simply don't invite that account. Having a standard of communication is important. Having a standard of communication offers you flexibility and offers you the opportunity to control the noise. So this is a, these are all real examples, except for the, the, uh, the bot because that's being tested, all real examples of things th uh, that happened and all in a very short time period and being able to keep an eye on all of them. So the Geek Lab is our community room where people come and hang out and talk about tech. I like keeping an eye on it. Every once in a while, I like to get into a good conversation with people there. But when I'm at work, I don't really have a lot of time for that. So I want to be in that room, but I don't want constant push notifications for it. I do, however, want a push notification from our radio station when the program director says, hey, the radio station's off the air. That's something I need to respond to in a couple of minutes. It's very helpful that my boss when I say I'm on my way and then he says, hold on a second, I think I know what the problem is, I will fix it. He can jump in there and say, I'll take care of it. They're existing in their own bubble. I'm just a part of that bubble when I need to be and I can keep an eye on it. If that bubble is resolved, now it falls off my radar and I go back to what I'm doing. My mother says part of my fence fell down. Any chance I can get some help? That's something I want to see no matter what job I'm doing. If my mom needs help, I'm going to drop what I'm doing and I'm going to go help her. So keeping an eye on her chat, no matter which work hat I'm wearing or which personal hat I'm wearing, is helpful. Over at our church, somebody had, a trouble, had trouble with, um, uh, with, with their phone, I think it was. And so keeping an eye on that allows me to say that's a time-critical issue. That's a time-sensitive issue. That's something I would want to address right away. Then we can start getting into automation. We use OS Ticket at, at, our, at our work, and it's a great open-source ticketing system, but it has one minor flaw, which is that there isn't a great mobile client, meaning there isn't a great way to get push notifications to incoming alert tickets. Kind of a problem when your job is to respond to incoming work tickets. Matrix solves that because we can just suck that information and say, when, th when we want to notify about this event, drop it in this matrix room. And then I can configure that matrix room to be as loud or as, uh, as controlled as I want. So, okay, we've gotten there, right? Now we've, we've, we've done it. We've finally gotten all of the communication into one place. You have become nothing but a matrix room to me. It doesn't matter what platform you want to be on. You and I can communicate because we can tie the technology together. But now we have a new problem. Now all the messages come to one place. So it's really noisy and it becomes almost impossible to sort through the important stuff, the stuff that we want to see from all of the noise. So how do we reduce it? So I experimented with over a year of different ways to do this. I tried different accounts. I tried uh, spaces, which I'll get to in a second. None of them quite worked for me. And part of that was there is this cultural expectation with read receipts that once somebody reads a message, you will respond to that person. Even if it's to say, I'm busy, I can't respond. And then there's some people that are like, no, you should respond and we should have this conversation even though you told me you were busy. So 
there's a problem. So how do we fix that with Matrix? How can we use an extensible communications platform to fix that? Well, the answer turned out to be a project uh, called the Matrix Community Manager. And what the Matrix Community Manager does is it's a bot that can live in a bunch of different Matrix channels. And when somebody is looking for me, they issue the command, hashtag page Noah, and then they give me the channel or whatever the message is that they want me to see. And no matter what account I'm on, no matter what I'm doing, I'm watching one specific channel that delivers all of those alerts to me. And so I get a push notification and, hey, somebody's looking for you here and it's obviously important enough because they did the, the, they did the dance, right? Because it's a bot, it never actually tells the other person when or if I saw the message. It just delivers it to me. So now I sit in the control seat of my communication and I can choose how much I want to be uh, interrupted with noise. And so if I'm really working on something and like, I'll get to that later, it's one push notification and I move on. Spaces. So spaces are a way to filter matrix rooms. Again, we've gotten all of the information into one place. So now how do we separate it back out? We, sometimes we might want to say, I only want to see telegram chats. I only want to see signal chats. I only want to see my close friends. I only want to see work stuff. How do we do that? Spaces allow us to separate rooms. So I work primarily at AltaSpeed Technologies. So there, our standard communication tool is matrix. So that's an easy one. My church has a number of different communication things that they use, but I can tie them all to matrix. So again, they just become matrix rooms and I can put those all into a space. And it, now they're intermingled, right? It doesn't matter that one person wants a text, one person wants to use GroupMe, and one person wants to use Facebook, and one person wants it. Does, none of that matters. You go into that space because that's the little container I've decided that you belong in and it's a way to organize my life. I work for Latent Broadcasting. They're native matrix users. That's what they use for communication. So that's easy. Uh, texting. Talked about jmp.chat. I like to have all of, I want to know who the people are that absolutely insist on doing everything over SMS. Let's put all of those guys into a group. Now, a chat can belong to more than one space. So maybe you want somebody who is an SMS user to reside both in texting and in friends. That's totally possible. Um, so it, <laughs> servers in Discord. When you click on that button, I hope I'm not crushing anyone's dreams here. You are not a server administrator. You've not spun anything up. You've literally just clicked on a button and they gave you a little space on their existing server. Their server being the one that you never get access to and can't self-host and can't own and yeah, not a server. Is Matrix perfect? Is Element perfect? Is the client perfect? Is the protocol perfect? No. Everything has a downside, but in technology, after doing this for a number of years, I've eventually concluded that you just have to pick what problems you want to solve. So Matrix gets it 90% right. Element specifically is the like blessed client from the people that made Matrix. On Android, if we have a direct message conversation and I want to see what your username is, so that I can copy it or send it to somebody else, view it to see if you're on Liberia Chat, if you're a na native matrix user, if you're IRC or whatever. It's a four step process. You have to open a chat, you have to click on their name, you have to go down to the how many people are in the room, you gotta click on that person, then you're at an opportunity where you can copy their username. It's not that it's not possible, it's not that it's not, it's not a technical problem, but it's just a thing that normal people will look at and say, that's complicated, there's too many buttons. I don't understand. How do I tell it? You know, and they just, they get overwhelmed very quickly. So there's an area for growth. There's a, an area for, there's an opportunity for improvement. The second part is it's great to have encryption. It's great to have verified identities, but that comes with a certain amount of technical overhead that we have to manage. So they do a pretty good job of managing keys for you. I, we were talking a little bit at the beginning about how Telegram deals with encrypted chats or lack thereof transferring to other devices. Matrix, specifically the, the, the double ratchet protocol, has a process for sucking those keys up into an encrypted vault of sorts and then 
downloading them onto other devices. Now, you don't have to do that. You don't have to use the key store if you don't want to. If you say, I want to manage my keys and I want to export them as a text file and I want to store them on my however it is you want to store them and I'll import them when I decide I want to import them. You can absolutely do that. And that, that, that functionality is absolutely exposed in the UI. However, it can be overwhelming to a new user who has absolutely no idea, particularly if they're not technically savvy, what all those buttons do and how that works. So the normal person to function with a matrix account has to have four things. They have to have their username. They have well, three things, really. They have to have their username. They have to have their account password, which is how they secure their unique namespace. And then to unlock that key vault to get those encrypted messages, there's a, sec there's a third or second password, a third piece of information that you need to decrypt the vault. Now, if you forget that, there's also a recovery key. But one, users do not expect to have two passwords for one thing, and they, that confuses them. Um, secondly, they don't, if you're using encryption, Often, sometimes what will happen is you will open up a chat and you'll send a message and something goes wrong with the key exchange and so you just don't get the message for a little bit. Again, to us that are technical people and we understand what's happening, we go, oh yeah, that's what's happening. We just got to wait for the key to send. Well, I wouldn't want, I mean, I want the message to be encrypted and I want the key to only reside on their device, but if they shut the program down or they close the phone too fast or a number of different things can prevent the key from getting sent again. To technical people, we get it. To normal people, they just go, I didn't get the message. Okay, So there's a little bit of rough edges that could be worked out. The other thing, and I've taken a screenshot of this, Telegram, look at how concise Telegram is uh, horizontally speaking. You can put it and have it up running on your screen. It doesn't take up much screen real estate, but you can keep an eye on a chat. Look what happened. I didn't even actually reduce this down to the same size as Telegram. And look what happens. It becomes absolutely unusable. So, and that is because it's an Electron app, right? It's because it's a gigantic web page wrapped inside of an Electron wrapper. There are native clients, and so some of those eliminate that problem, but they come with their own issues. So it's not perfect. There is room for improvement. And the, and the, and the, and the last thing is client complexity. So again, there are, if, you can, if you think to yourself as a geek or a nerd, I wonder if I, the answer is yes. Yes, you can do that. The problem is when you put, when you expose that functionality in the UI, somebody who isn't familiar with the technology becomes kind of overwhelming to them. So you're saying to yourself, you've done a great job, you've talked me into it, how do I get started? How do I do this? You can just download Element and you can sign up for a free account on matrix.org and it'll work just like it does on Telegram or Signal or anything else where you don't know where the server is, you don't care where the server is, it's just there, it's magic, it's the cloud. You can do that. Or you can say, I would like to have a little bit more control over it. This is going into my business, so I don't want a bunch of people on there. And didn't you just tell me that there are some performance degradations if you have a ton of users on a server? Matrix.org has a lot of users. What if I don't want to do that? You can sign up at Element Matrix Services. And so the people that actually develop Matrix will give you a dedicated server, a real server, not a Discord fake pretend I clicked on the button server. This, this is valuable for two reasons. It's valuable for reason one, because if you look at the cost of Slack, yes, there's an entry level in Slack for $0, but they start, they erase your messages after 10,000. They only backlog 10,000 messages and they're going to purge them. So it's not, there's, there's compromises with the free tier. The next tier up is 667 a month, so almost seven bucks a user. So if you're calculating this out for a business or a small office, you're doing seven bucks a user. You go over to EMS, they're going to do the exact same thing for $4 a user. And again, the great thing about Matrix is because of federation, you, can, you have a team of four people. So you sign up with Matrix and you pay the $4 per user per month and now you have your own instance. But now you come across somebody and it's, it's a contractor or it's somebody that you're working with for, for a little bit and that you say, I wanna invite that person over to the chat. Well, geez, I don't really wanna pay another four bucks a month for that person. Well, guess what? You can send them over to matrix.org. They can sign up there and then you can just invite that person into the chat because of federation that they don't penalize you for that. Um, and so there's nothing that's going to stop you from, from doing that. Yeah. Um, so, so I know I've, I've talked to a couple different people that have the same, um, same sort of issue. So a couple of years ago, I migrated my entire family onto Telegram. Mm -hmm. So my mom, my dad, both of my brothers, my girlfriend. Um, now Matrix is there. Matrix is a lot more flexible. There's a lot more 
features of Matrix, would, if you're migrating your, something like your family, would you suggest its own dedicated server as like five, six users, or and, um, what would you do in that case? And also, how would you handle talking to them and actually saying, Matrix could do a good thing compared to Telegram, we should switch to that completely. So how would you handle that? Yeah, that's a great question. So the question is, if you have family members that are already on a platform, how do you convince them to come to Matrix? So this is going to sound a little counterintuitive, but I'm going to tell you, you don't. The advantage of Matrix is that it can talk to all of the other places and they can stay wherever they want to stay. Now, at some point, they might look over and go, how in the world? Are you able to get your text messages, Telegram messages, Facebook messages, Twitter messages, Slack messages, team messages, all in one place on your phone and on your computer and you just sign into one app? Gosh, I wish I had that. How do you do that? That conversation may absolutely come up and then you could say, go over to matrix.org and sign up for a free account. If you're a tech person and say, I have the ability to host my own server and that's easy enough to do, or I have a, you know, a fat bank account and I don't mind paying for that, then absolutely. I would absolutely suggest purchasing a server. Here's the other thing. Buying a server from EMS, I said it does two things. So the first thing is it's cheaper than uh, Slack. So there's the value add right off the bat. It's just less money. But there's another really important point here. Paying them $4 a month actively helps them continue to develop the matrix protocol. They got you this far for free. They went and asked for money and worked their butts off and got you this far to deliver the pro to, to deliver the product that you have. Now, how do we become good stewards of the open source world and, and push it forward? The reason Heartbleed happened is precisely because there weren't people funding the ongoing development of critical pieces of technology that we rely on. So if you try this and it works for you, which you can do for free or you can set up and self-host for free, you might consider if you are in a financial position to do so to support the people that made it. Yes. Yeah, so it's right here. It is, or I'm sorry, right here, four dollars a month. It is a little, um, it's a little blurry on the projector. But if you go to uh, Element.io and click on sign up for EMS, they'll have the pricing right there for you. But the the it's it's for they they have a number of different plans you can sign up for. That's the most one to one comparison to what people are looking for. Um, so it's four dollars per user per month. They do have other plans. So for example, you can pay five dollars for just an individual, and then they'll give you all of the bridging. So they'll host all of the bridging, so you can connect it to all of the other services. If you pay the four dollars per month, that's just Matrix, and it's on you to figure out how you want to bridge it. Make your decisions, whether it's Matrix or it's Slack or it's your operating system or it's the phone you buy, whatever it is, I highly encourage you, I implore you in the strongest possible way to make those decisions based on values. I hear all too often, it's just a tool. I promise you, it is not just a tool. Where you put your money, what tools you choose to use matters. The message that you send to these companies matters. So make your decision on values. I value privacy. I value security. I value open source. So when I give my money to places like Matrix, what they turn around and do with that money is they say, we want to roll out in location sharing. It's available in every chat app, right? They encrypt it. So, and they go through a stupid amount of work to make sure that when they render the map, because they got to get the image from somewhere, they go to a stupid amount of work to make sure that nobody knows who you are, who requested that map image that they embed in your phone or that you shared with another person. They make sure that the server operator can't see any of that information. That's the kind of value you're paying for when you support this company, whether or not you pay for it outright and have them host it, or you just host it yourself and support the platform that way, but you're making a value-based decision. There are uh, a number of different uh, uh, people that are involved in Matrix that are very, very active in the community. So Matthew, one of the founders of Matrix, sits in matrix.org. So if you go into Matrix HQ, he's in there. Every so often, he'll respond to a message. He joins other chat rooms when he sees people that are are, are, are fascinated about Matrix because underneath the hood, he's a geek like us and he likes it. Um, and so he hangs out. Um, again, I, I think we talked about this a little bit, but Federation for Guests. So if you are paying for an instance, you have the opportunity to have 
uh, guests federate and you're not paying for them. And the most important thing for me is nobody can pull the rug out from under you. You can set this up yourself. I set up my EMS instance mostly as a test because I wanted to see how that process worked with the company. So called up EMS, said I want to sign up for a plan. I did it for my company. The first question I asked him, I think within like 10 minutes of signing up is, I want my server signing key. I want to be able to take my server away from you and host it myself. And 30 seconds later, one of their support people got on, verified that I was who I said I was, and sent me the signing key in an encrypted chat. And from that point on, and, and then said, and if you have any trouble, please let us know and we'd be happy to migrate the thing that you're paying us to do and we'll help you take the money away from us and put it on your own thing if that's what you wish to do. That is a company who respects your privacy. That is a company who wants to serve you and has your interest at its best heart and not its profit margin. There's a number of different services that have sprung up around Matrix. So Beeper is, the, uh, it is an app that you can download and it's a service that you pay for and it bridges everything all at once. So you sign it into Facebook, you sign it into Telegram, you sign it into WhatsApp, you sign it into Slack, you sign it into Teams, and all of that stuff just shows up as Matrix. So if you're looking for the bridging as an, like a, a whole hog solution that just anybody can sign up and you download their client, the Beeper client, which is essentially element, but with a few changes. And that's just a service that you can buy. Maybe it's not right for you. And most of the people in this room could probably bridge it themselves. But there's a lot of people out there that they go, I like the concept. I just don't know how to do any of that technical stuff. I just want to download an app and pay money. Yes. No, because it, well, with the encrypted chats, no, because the keys still reside on the local device. However, if you're bridging to something like Telegram, because it's a plain text message to begin with, yes, that message is going to federate through Beeper service, and no, there's nothing you can do about that. But my answer to that would be, but it's already on Telegram server. So if you trust Telegram, why not trust the people that would give you the encryption if it were available? Signal, for example, I believe can do encrypt encrypted bridging because both sides support an actual standardized encryption that we can look through and audit and understand. Does that answer your question? Um, T2Bot.io. So you sign up for matrix.org and you say, I just want to bridge some Telegram chats or I want to bridge uh, a, a Discord chat, but I don't understand how to set up the bridge and I don't have money for Beeper. This guy runs a public bridging service for free. So you just invite his bot to Telegram and you invite his bot into your matrix chat and give it the command TG bridge, give it the, the, the room ID. And a few seconds later, the portal synchronization begins and the rooms are bridged. Mind drip one. So if you have been out in the show, uh, on the show floor, you've probably seen the big posters and the big lights and the cameras and all of the streaming stuff that we have down at the end. This is, we do open source broadcasting and as part of that, I refuse to go to Twitch and YouTube and all of those places because I'm not going to a place that they can pull the rug out. Oh, by the way, I have no interest in collecting your data, nor do I really want to support another company that collects your data. So I wanted a simple website that has a HTML5 player and a chat client, a web-based chat client that's on the side so it kind of looks like Twitch. And I want you to be able to log in if you want a unique username, or I want you to be able to just click guest and be dropped right into the chat. Don't have to sign up for username. Don't have to give me an email. Just drop me into the chat. I want to talk to some other geeks. I don't want you to know who I am because you don't need to for me to participate in a chat. That is only possible because of how extensible Matrix is, because you can write a client to do that. If you want to take it one step further, say, I, uh, I don't want to pay EMS to host it. I want to host it. It's open source, right? I should have the code. I want to run it myself. There are three components that make up a matrix server synapse. The first is the server signing key. That is the most important thing. If you walk out of this room, if you take nothing away from this talk and you have any interest in setting up a, a matrix server, make sure to back up your server signing key. You get one one opportunity to do that before that server signing key is distributed to all other matrix servers. And if you burn it, if you lose it or you destroy it and you didn't back it up, there's no recreating it. And the reason for that is because how would you know the if that's the real server or somebody else who's trying to imitate the server? If we're going to have uh, a completely cryptographically unique server, then that has to be true. So back up your server signing key, back up your server signing key, back up your server signing key. 
The other two are important, but not as important as the server signing key. The database is what keeps all of your messages. So if you'd like to have your messages, uh, you should probably back up the database. And the third thing is the media repo. So that's basically all of the attachments, the pictures, the videos, those kinds of things. So if you want those, you can back those up. Although it will go back and pull from Federation. So you have that option. If you want to set up Matrix, there is a whole stack of stuff that you have to install. And I, you can do it in like 45 minutes. It's essentially Nginx, SSL, uh, Postgres, uh, Synapse itself, and a couple other things. If you want the easiest way to set up a Matrix server, I highly recommend you check out the Matrix Docker Ansible deploy. If you can open a text file, can generate eight passwords, and you have an email address, you can set up a matrix server. Open the text file, put that information in, run the playbook against a server, a matrix server will appear. A matrix server will appear, a web-based element client will appear, Grafana will appear, uh, Prometheus underneath will appear, so you can collect all of the metrics and know what's happening. Synapse admin will appear, so you could have a little web-based thing to administrate your Synapse server. Everything you need to have a fully functioning matrix stack can be set up in uh, like five minutes, eight minutes. Yes. Good question. What are the minimum requirements for a matrix server? The answer to that question is it entirely depends on how many users you have. 